Chris Verone of Strategus, a Baird company, joins me now. Chris, uh, great to speak with you. Um, I, I, we've been Thank promising you. your, uh, your three best-looking uh, charts for the moment. So talk <laughs> about the themes that are standing out to you and, and maybe still look like they're worth playing. Well, I think we're at the point of the year where we need to start thinking about thematically uh, what's going to matter most uh, next year. And, you know, Mike, it, it just stands out to me that over the last six, seven, eight weeks, growth investors and growth stocks have gotten everything they've craved all year. Lower dollar, lower rates, softer inflation, softer economic growth, and yet they still can't work. I mean, over that last six, seven, eight week period, uh, growth has still underperformed. And what's been better is actually commodity, basic resources. So I would encourage um, people to really take a hard look at the basic materials here. The steel stocks in particular are coming out of a massive base. This is steel dynamics and new core. Relative to the S&P 500 in particular, they have really just turned up from about a four or five year base. So I think important thematic idea going into 2023. And I know you've highlighted some of the, the sort of global uh, resource type stocks, yeah. too, that seem to be playing along. So it, it seems like there's something uh, something bubbling up uh, across the globe on that um, rock over paper. Explain that a little bit yeah. as, a, as a pair trade. Yeah, um, important theme for us uh, as well. This idea that hard assets beat financial assets in a world dominated by quantitative tightening, not quantitative easing. It's a reverse from what we've seen. Uh, over the last decade. We like gold here, but I also like copper. And I, I think one pair in particular that really captures this is being long Freeport, short Amazon. It's the idea of commodities over consumer uh, in the next cycle. Um, you know, Freeport basically underperformed for much of the last 15 years. That has turned in a very, very meaningful way. So the idea of being long rock short paper is hard assets over financial assets. I think Freeport over Amazon really captures that thematically. So does gold versus banks. I mean, that's another relationship mm -hmm. that we look to for risk appetite. And gold outperforming banks here, uh, I think, is an important message. Yeah, in, in both senses, I, I mean, there are echoes of kind of the early 2000s. Yeah. I know you've, you've kind of sure. hit on that. Though that was a big tidal shift uh, in that direction. Um, somewhat differently uh, in pharmaceuticals. I mean, obviously very defensive, yeah. and, and they've, they've outperformed uh, kind of quietly. You know, Mike, I really love the paradox of COVID moving officially, finally out the window, gone as pharmaceutical stocks finally start to break out. I mean, pharma has been a dead industry for the better part of the last five or six years, but we've seen leadership really coming from the likes of Merck and Bristol Myers. Bristol Myers in particular, really breaking out of a four or five year base. Uh, that's actually back to the 1999, 2000 high. So really 22 years unchanged, finally starting to come out of that. So I still think healthcare here as a leader into 23 um, is a theme worth playing. And then more broadly, Chris, I mean, if we're just looking at the, uh, the S&P 500, it's been, you know, this kind of indecisive period here over, over a number of weeks, not a lot of net movement. But uh, I know you've been kind of scrutinizing underneath the surface and, and whether it's telling us that there's, there's any hope for a trend change. Well, listen, I, I, I think this market certainly has the characteristics of some range-bound environment. And I think when you're, you know, in those range-like markets, you have to look for you have to look for clues as to what's the next major move. And I'll tell you one thing I don't like. I, I don't like the fact that the banks seem to be worried about something. Uh, the banks look sick, particularly the regional banks. Um, you know, banks versus S&P making about two-year relative lows. But look at Fifth Third, look at, uh, look at um, Synovus, um, uh, look at PNC. I mean, these are stocks that are breaking down from really eight, eight, nine, ten month uh, topping pattern. So I think the weakness out of the banks is certainly new information. Perhaps it reflects the curve, but I think it's something that the market would suggest ooh, something feels off here. Mm -hmm. And then um, really just picking up on your, your Amazon idea as a short. Yeah. I mean, I know that, you know, for you, trends mean you have to respect them, but it's down by 50 percent off a high as are, yeah. you know, Salesforce, as is Tesla. Um, when do you look for indications that, uh, that that's, that's exhausted in terms of the selling? I mean, I assume it's not yet is the answer. But. Well, I think the punchline is there's a difference between a stock going up and a stock going up as leadership. And when we go back mm. to that time frame you mentioned, Mike, about 2000, 2001, 2002, remember, there were two phases to that bear market. The first phase was the big techs and the big growths 
going down more than the market. The second phase was in the next bull market, those stocks went up less, right? So you could convince me that we're in the ballpark of some type of tech or growth flow, but I don't think mm -hmm. we're going to go back to them as our leadership. And you know, so many of us are playing the relative game. I don't think going back to Amazon or Microsoft or Apple is going to pay as a leadership story in the years to come. Yeah, no, it's a good distinction um, and uh, not, not a lot of opportunity cost, in other words, in, uh, in, in underweighting those perhaps uh, in the time to come. Sure. Chris, uh, great to talk to you. Thanks very much. Have a great weekend. Thank you. You too.